Hello, and welcome back to Worked Heat Transfer Examples. Today, we'll be doing another problem in internal convection. Here we have compressed air with given properties moving through a 10 millimeter inner diameter tube that's maintained at a constant temperature with a flow rate that's given. If the temperature is entering at 125 degrees Celsius, what is the exit temperature of the compressed air in a two meter long tube? We have a sketch of the problem given at the bottom of the page. We know that the, in, that the inlet temperature is 125 degrees Celsius. We're given a mass flow rate in kilograms per hour, but I've converted that to kilograms per second. We know the length of the tube is two meters. We're given that the surface temperature of the tube is 45 degrees Celsius. We know the diameter of the tube. We're also given a host of fluid properties like the density, the viscosity, the thermal conductivity, the Prandtl number, and the specific heat. What we don't know is the temperature at which the fluid is exiting the tube. And that's what we're asked to find. Assumptions for this problem include, one, that the pipe has a constant surface temperature. Two, that fluid and material properties are constant. Three, that the system is at steady state. Four, that there are no losses to the surroundings. Again, we'll try to follow our convection flow chart. First, we want to understand the geometry and boundary conditions. We want to determine relevant properties at an appropriate temperature. Remember, for internal convection, we're going to take the average temperature between the inlet and outlet temperatures. We're going to find the Reynolds number of the flow so that we can figure out if the flow is laminar or turbulent. We'll need to choose an appropriate convection correlation, and then we'll have to find the heat transfer coefficient and solve the problem. The first step we need to do is to understand the geometry and boundary conditions. In this case, we have an internal flow with a constant surface temperature for flow moving through a round pipe. In this case, we know that we'll need to figure out if the fluid is developing or developed, both hydrodynamically and thermally. And then we'll need to figure out if the flow is laminar or turbulent so we can pick the right Nusselt number correlation. So the next thing we need to do is determine relative properties at an appropriate temperature. In this problem, it's nice because we're already given all the relevant properties that we need. So we don't have to look up anything on a table or do any kind of linear interpolation. Now we'll use those properties to calculate our Reynolds number. We know the definition for Reynolds number. In this case, we're not given the free stream velocity, so we'll have to calculate that from the mass flow rate and the cross-sectional area of our pipe. We know all this information, so we can put numbers into our calculator, simplify it a little bit. Here we see that the velocity of the fluid is 16 meters per second, in case we need it later. And we find that our Reynolds number is 60,150. That's greater than 2,300, so we know in this case the flow through the pipe is turbulent. But we need to know if it's fully developed. So entrance lengths for turbulent flow are approximately 10 diameters down the tube. In this case, the entrance length for the hydrodynamic and thermal boundary layers are the same because the flow is turbulent. Here, we can do the math and find out that the fully developed region is the first 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters. So both flows are fully developed most of the time, or both boundary layers are fully developed most of the time. Now we want to choose the appropriate convection correlation. So we know that the flow is not laminar, so it's neither of these correlations. 
We're going to assume that the, that the pipe is a smooth pipe, so we'll get rid of our rough and transitional Nusselt number correlation. And we know that in this case, the surface temperature is less than the temperature of the medium. So we'll pick an N of 0 0.3 instead of 0 0.4. So now we have our appropriate Nusselt number correlation. Finally, we'll solve for H and figure out the answer to the problem. So we have our Nusselt number correlation. We'll plug in the values we have for Reynolds number and Prandtl number. And we find that our Nusselt number, in this case, is 137.3. We can use the definition of the Nusselt number to find the heat transfer coefficient, given here. Again, we put numbers into our calculator and we find a heat transfer coefficient of 466.8 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now that we have the heat transfer coefficient, we can find the exit temperature of the fluid leaving the pipe. We know that the temperature has a particular profile in pipes with a constant surface temperature. That profile is given by the equation here. We want to find a case where x is equal to L, the length of the pipe, and we substitute the information we have into the equation. We put some numbers into our calculator, simplify this expression a little bit, and we find that this dimensionless temperature, given on the left of the equation, is equal to 0 0.04. Sorry, 0 0.074. Now we know this expression and we can work out TML or T out. We do a little bit of algebra. We find the expression for TML or T out. We put some numbers into our calculator and I find that the exit fluid temperature is 50.9 degrees. Who's awesome? You're awesome. I'll see you again next time on Worked Heat Transfer Examples.